We're gonna do a video on ending a marriage. It's kind of a tough topic. If you're not in a marriage, you know, maybe a lot of you guys are, you're thinking about ending a marriage, getting a divorce or an LTR. I think this is gonna be useful for you to understand some of the things that you need to think about in doing so. I got this email and it goes, hey John, how do you decide when to end long-term relationships, a marriage? I don't view marriage as equal to dating. Not everyone agrees with my view, but it is a feeling I have. It's much a deeper commitment for me and I've been struggling with it more than I would with a girlfriend. When when would you give up? How would you end a relationship in the most compassionate way? Thanks. And ironically, he says, congrats on your new engagement because I got engaged. So, okay. So here's the thing I'll say from the very beginning of this, and some people are going to disagree with this. I understand the implications, but especially if you've been with someone for a very long time, you have to realize that this may be the most traumatic event that you go through in your entire life. Even if you end it yourself, if it happens to you, maybe it's a little bit easier Maybe it's not, I don't know, because I know in, in my situation, I was the one who ended things and I didn't realize how tough it would be, especially if you've been with someone for a very long time, you've built your whole entire life around that. And I would say that the amount of discomfort and pain involved in that process is worse than death because it is a true death of something and it is very difficult to describe. So the reason why I'm starting off with this is because I want you to understand that this is not a light thing. This is something that is a very heavy thing. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't end a marriage. I'm not saying that you shouldn't get a divorce. There's some good reasons for doing so, especially if you're in a situation where the other person has not changed, there is not making a positive improvement in their life, where you're in an abusive situation and you're continually being abused and you have done the things that you can do, you've shown them the love that, that you can, and they, they still are not improving. They're still not being the person that they could be. They're not trying and you don't see any hope. You don't wanna waste any more time in this situation. So th I think those are good reasons to leave a situation like that. But again, I wouldn't treat it very lightly. I think you shouldn't just say, I don't like this person, or I wanna go and date other girls, or I wanna be the man and pick up girls and stuff like that. I get it. It seems appealing, that lifestyle and whatnot. And there's some good, some benefits to that. But just realize that you're gonna go through hell, especially if you have children involved, especially if you've been together for more than five years, or 10 years, that it becomes your life. And there's so much stuff around that you're not thinking about until you go through that process. So my advice on this is before you give up on this thing, that you work through and you try to do everything that you can. One good book to read is Away the Superior Man by David Dieta. I think that book will help a lot of guys to become the masculine man that they can in a relationship and to also understand the dynamics, right? One thing that I didn't understand when I was younger was that women are emotional, they're supposed to be emotional and they're gonna vent. And most of the time when women are in arguments with you, and again, I'm not saying that you should allow someone to disrespect you, call you names, curse at you and things like that, especially physically abuse you, but a lot of the time when women Women are communicating that they're upset and expressing their emotions. What really the solution to the problem is was that they don't feel loved. That's usually the case. I'm not saying that there's not other issues and things like that, but almost always it's not what she says it is, it's that she doesn't feel loved. And so that's something that a lot of guys don't understand how to cope with and how to deal with. And so even though, again, you have to take responsibility, you have to say, there's this person and yeah, she could be better, but are you being the best that you can be at this time? And in a situation where I think you wanna end a long-term relationship, something like that, a marriage, you wanna make sure that before you do that, you're doing the best, you're being the best that you can be because then you're giving that other person the biggest opportunity to change, to improve themselves, to rectify the situation so you don't have to go through this upheaval in your life. So that's a big thing. And then you can also leave that without regrets because you can say, okay, well, I did everything I could. I tried everything I could. Now, that this doesn't mean that you start simping. It doesn't mean that you start bending over backwards and doing everything that she wants and trying to please her and trying to like do all these things to try to earn her love. That's not the way to act as well. Instead, it's to start acting like the man that you should be, which means that you have a backbone. It means that you actually might even stop tolerating some things that you're in. I think a lot of guys, they're tolerating disrespect and because of that, they're having problems in the relationship. Whereas if, if they drew a line and they stopped tolerating that, uh, again, does that mean making threats? No, it means simply stating your boundaries. It means that you have solid boundaries and you say, I don't appreciate you talking to me like that. Don't yell in my face. Don't, don't curse at me. Don't call me names. Whatever it is, you're stating the boundary. And then if the person continues to persist, you just exit the situation calmly. You
you just cut off your attention. And if you start doing that, you're gonna train people in how to treat you. And a lot of the times, the reason why you end up in a toxic situation or marriage that's not gonna work, long-term relationship, is because you've actually tolerated too much and then when you didn't tolerate it, you didn't tolerate it in the wrong way. The most powerful person is the person that says what they say and they don't argue with you and they don't need to. And if you disagree, you cross that boundary, they just walk away. They just exit the situation. They don't give you attention and then they'll come back. And then if you want another try, go ahead. But if you repeat this over and over again and you're not learning and you're not continuing to respect my boundaries in the way that you that I expect to be treated or that my standards I have for people in my life, then we're going to exit. And I think that's the way you talked about in this email about how do you do this? What's the compassionate way to quit the relationship? And the way is to be firm in your boundaries and just gradually draw apart because if this person doesn't respect your boundary, you're spending less and less time with them. You're giving them less and less attention. You're not having interactions with them. And then pretty soon you have fizzled things out and it's done because you don't want to be in that situation where someone doesn't respect your boundaries. But most of the time, if you do that, you're going to find that you're going to start to get people that are respecting your boundaries, your wife or your girlfriend or fiance, whatever it is, that she starts respecting your boundaries. That is one part of it. But the other part of it is being extremely loving, compassionate, understanding, learning to allow women to vent, and to really just show her that you love her, like to put forth the action, the effort of love instead of waiting on the feeling of it, instead of taking it as an action. There's one thing that Tony Robbins said, you, know, you give it 90 days where you just forget about yourself. Right. Again, you still have to have boundaries, but you don't worry about your own needs. And said, you just focus on them, just focus on how can you make their life better? How can you do things without wanting anything in return? Just showing them as much love as possible. I think that's a smart strategy. A lot of times, I think that's gonna turn someone around because you would get into the cycle where she does something to you and then you do something to her and there's this resentment cycle and you can completely stop that cycle even though it's going to take some time because you're going to start doing these kind things and then she's going to react negatively like you don't really mean this and a lot of that buried hurt is going to come out but you let that work through that process and then at the end of that, what you end up with is a situation where that person may make a shift. And if they don't make a shift, then you can be certain. If you give 90 days and you're setting boundaries in a kind way and you're not worrying about yourself and just focusing on that person and loving them as much as possible, and they don't make movements to actually make efforts to do the same, then you know that this is not the person that you wanna be with and that you've done everything that you can and that it is how it is. And I think that will allow you to let go of the situation, to accept it, and to make those changes, and also to do it in a way that's not gonna be a violent upheaval. We're not getting to a huge divorce court and all this kind of legal proceedings because you have exited in the most kind and respectful way as possible. You've set your boundaries, you've made it clear, you've shown a great amount of compassion and love, and it did not work out, that's all that you can do. That makes the most sense to me. It's still gonna be a painful process, but at least you can walk away knowing that you did what you should do, you did everything that you could. And I think that makes a lot of sense. So anyway, it's a difficult situation to be in. And this is something also for a lot of you guys that are single to think about, right? Before you get into a commitment, like he said, I just got engaged. You need to really think about it and think about what would happen if things went wrong, if things ended, and what kind of situation would you put yourself into and how would you deal with that? And the things I'm talking about here, before you take the leap, don't ever get into a relationship. Don't get into a marriage with someone unless you're sure of who they are as a person, as their character. Don't do it saying, okay, well, they're almost there, but then they need to come the rest of this way and change to some degree. If you have that in your mind, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna put yourself into a really bad situation where you're depending on them changing. You're not accepting them as they are, is creating resentment, creating this cycle and you're gonna be constantly disappointed. You have to be sure that if you're going to get into a long-term relationship, get into a marriage situation with someone, that you know for certain that you already accept them exactly how they are, that you don't need them to change at all. If you need them to change at all, don't get into the situation, don't do it. Because so many guys get into that situation, and, they're, and girls too, but, and they're expecting their partner to change, and that's very, very unlikely to happen because people change for one of two reasons. One on their own, because they've had enough of the way they're living. And usually when people change on their own, it's by themselves. Usually people who change on their own change when they're, they're single, when they're on their own, they're spending time by themselves. That's usually when people change on their own. The second way that people change is through someone else 
influencing them indirectly. What does that mean? That means that if I tell you change, 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 I don't accept you how you are, change, 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 you're gonna resist, you're gonna push back, you're not gonna change. But if I, through example and through how I act and how I treat you or what I'm doing, if you see me in that causes you to feel a certain way, then you may change. Not always, but you may change in that situation. Right. So those are the, really the only two ways that people change. And usually the first way where they change on their own is because they hit rock bottom, they had enough. For example, I changed my life when I got really fat and I had to go to the store and I had to buy size 46 pants because the 44s didn't fit me. That was when I was like, John, you're a fat ass. This is like, you can't have any confidence in yourself. You feel like a miserable piece of crap. And that caused me to change. So that's the most important thing I think to understand in all this. But like I said, do what I'm telling you to do. Give it the effort that you can, uh, that you owe, because you did make some kind of a commitment. Again, if you're in an abusive situation, something like that, exit that situation, obviously. But if you're doing what I'm telling you to do, and then things are still not working out, you can know that you've made the right decision, that you as a man have done what you can do, and you can take full responsibility for that and acknowledge that it is done. And I think that's gonna save you a lot of trouble and heartache. I think a lot of people make mistakes in the way that they do these things and it causes so much more drama and trauma than is necessary because they take it too lightly and they don't take any kind of responsibility. You have to fully take responsibility yourself first, work through that, try to be the best person that you can be. And then if that still is not enough, then you can rest assured, you know, exit that situation and be all right with that. So, all right, guys, uh, real quick here, if you found this useful, all right, <laughs> I'm gonna segue into a different topic. I, I know that a lot of you guys are looking at improving your life and becoming the best version of yourself. One aspect of that and one important thing to do is to set yourself up financially. Right. Like I said, I went through divorce process, I'm still financially free because I set myself up so well. Click the link down below, book a free call with a member of my team and we will help you to set up a plan, a financial freedom plan, so that you can be in a situation where you don't have to worry about money. Because one of the biggest things that causes divorces or causes problems in relationships is finances. And so you don't want to have that ruin your thing. You know what I mean? Like, if it's gonna be anything, it's gonna be other things, but so many people fight and struggle over finances. If you become financially free, you can at least take that stress and burden off of things while you're working on the other things in relationships. So click the link down below, you owe it to yourself to do this, to figure out can you become financially free? Can you set yourself up for the future? And I will talk to you next time. Take care.